Um, my guests tonight are both Connecticut Healthy Workplace Advocates, and if you watch the show, you'll know what that means. Uh, Dr. Kathy Hermes and Ms. Laura Lillian uh, Dickerson. Um, Kathy has been on the show before. She's a professor at CCSU. And Ms. Laura Lillian, I think, is known by everyone in New London County as a com <laughs> community activist. And um, the subject of the show is workplace bullying, uh, the problems and the solutions. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I, I guess I'll ask each of you uh, how you got involved with uh, workplace bullying advocacy. Um, for me, it, <clears throat> I first got involved when my best friend, somebody I'd known since childhood, committed suicide as a result of workplace bullying. And she was a, a federal employee out in California, and I was her executor. And as I learned more about it, I decided I wanted to become an advocate for reform in the law. And how long ago was this? She died in 2005. So you've been at it for quite a long time. Quite a while, still no <laughs> law, but we're working on it. Uh, and Miss Laura Lillian? Well, for me, it's, um, I got involved when a loved one of mine was um, impacted by workplace bullying. She um, was a target, and um, now, um, as being a target, uh, the target created, the bullying created victims, you know, people who loved her, who loved her dearly, and that's why I'm involved. Would you say that most people get involved because they know someone, or, you know, they see the impact day in, day out, mm -hmm. or? I think as a, as a coordinator of Connecticut Healthy Workplace Advocates, I do hear a lot from targets. But often in, when it comes to advocating, targets are too damaged to mm. advocate for themselves. And so they really depend on people like yes. their family members and friends to, to help them advocate, to be their voices. I guess I, what is workplace bullying? I guess. Okay, well, there, there are a couple definitions. Um, the legal definition that we're pushing for is um, abusive conduct. We don't even really call it bullying in the, in the model healthy workplace bill. Uh, verbal abuse, belittling, humiliation, intimidation, work sabotage, and the exploitation, the, the purposeful exploitation of a known physical or psychological vulnerability. And uh, we'll be putting this in real terms yeah. soon. But, uh, you know, and I think in the law, what we're looking for is what would a reasonable person think is abusive, humiliating, intimidating? For a psychological definition, it can be a lot more subjective. I think if, if you're really just talking person to person, yeah. uh, as opposed to in the courtroom. And I'm guessing it all has sort of a chronic component. It isn't just a one time uh, someone snaps at you or belittles right. you once. No, it's the character of the person who does this. You know, it's repetitive. Um, it's, um, I guess, it's a grandioso. You know, yeah. it's uh, you know, people feel that um, in order to elevate themselves, they have to stand on somebody, somebody's back and um, belittle them. Now, I think um, I've, we've heard a lot about workplace bullying among people in state employment and government employment. Yes. Is it a particular problem in governmental employment, or is it true throughout all kinds of workplaces? Well, I think it is a p particular problem in government employment. Um, as you know, you're talking about the culture, the nature of an agency, you know, where you might have, there, there might be a lot of um, nepotism and cronyism taking place, and the person who's doing the bullying is protected because um, of the relationships that they have with their human resources department. And, um, you know, it's, it's not taken serious. But um, the sad part about it is when a, in government, 
the taxpayers have to pay for the legal representation of those who are doing the bullying. And it's really sad when these, are, these people are repeated, their actions, you know, th it's not an aberration, you know, but this is what they do all the time. And when the taxpayers have to pay for their re legal representation, um, it's really not fair. You know, mm -hmm. if the governor wants to save money, you know, he wants to fix the budget, <laughs> he should go right there. Pass the workplace. Yes. <laughs> now, how frequent a problem is it? About 35 to 37 percent of the American workforce has been bullied at some point in time, according to research by the Workplace Bullying Institute and Zogby International. So about, so at any one point in time, maybe about one out of six workers is being bullied. But 37% have been bullied mm -hmm. to the point of health harm at some time in their life. And 50% of workers have experienced it in some way. Because when you add to that 37% the bystanders, and, yes. the, and the people who witnessed it in their offices, it affects a lot more people. And I imagine also the friends and families of the target. Oh, definitely, definitely. It has a um, collateral damage. You know, not only is the targeted person injured, but the family, the wholeness of the family is destroyed. You, when you're, you're witnessing your, your loved one, you know, not being the same person that they were before, and. Um, you know, um, you witness the med mental health damage, mm -hmm. the, the med medical, the physical damages that they experience. Now, you mentioned the term health harm. Mm -hmm. Specifically, what kind of uh, harm to people's health do, does workplace bullying seem to lead to? Well, uh, regarding um, the mental health, you know, they become very depressed they're not the same person that they were prior to the attack. And um, it, it, it does manifest into physical, you know, um, medical um, conditions such as um, fibromyalgia, um, loss of hair. Um, there are just many. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, people's blood pressure Oh, definitely. Goes up. Mm -hmm. um, the risk of, particularly in older workers, and older workers are often targets, um, risk of heart attack, yes, um, migraines, loss of appetite, sleep. Uh, sleep deprivations, and I'm not talking abstractly here. I mean, I my friend who um, was bullied in 2005 committed suicide. She went from being about 100. She was five foot eight. Five foot nine, mm -hmm. and she went from being about 140 pounds to weighing 105 pounds at the time of her death. Was sleeping only three hours a night, um, so the the effects are are quite real. And I, I think you know someone who's lost her hair, lost um, hair, appetite, uh, can't eat. Um, um, you know, and this was a, a vibrant person, and this person. Um, um, wanted to do things with her life and she's pretty young you know and um, it's she she was torn she was torn down um, very very deeply. Well, well you know we t see you know from our soldiers that come back yeah. um, post-traumatic stress but oh, it yes. seems like there's a lot of traumatic stress at yes. home oh, as yeah. well Yes. Well, yeah, there's um, diagnosis of, um, you know, individuals who suffer from workplace bullying, you know, having post-traumatic stress, and, you know, the prognosis might take a couple of years to, you know, for, for the cure, for them to be cured of it. Now, yeah. are doctors at all tuned into this kind of thing, or are a lot of the, the, the targets sort of left on their own? I think post-traumatic stress disorder ha has... Um, become more understood in the last 20 years since the Iraq wars and, and the wars that are going on now. And it's been more understood with respect to soldiers. I think it's still a mystery a bit when it comes to what I would call intimate violence, the, the kind of domestic violence or workplace violence, workplace bullying that happens. Um, but I know that um, a professor at uh, the University of Connecticut, Vicki Magley, who works in occupational uh, psychology, spoke about P 
people who are bullied and why some people seem to do better than others. And what she said is basically, we all have coping skills. Some are stronger. Some have stronger coping skills. They're not stronger people, mm. but they have stronger coping skills than other people. And they will cope better for a while. But no matter what, if the bullying continues, no matter how good your coping skills, you will feel the effects yes, of bullying. Yes, you will. Eventually. So the relentlessness will just catch yes, up to you in time, yeah. however yeah. you yeah. started out. Yeah. That's right. Now, what would you say the state of workplace bullying is in Connecticut? Well, since 2006, um, the Labor and Public Employees Committee has been thinking about the issue. Um, Senator Edith Prague, who just retired, was a champion of trying to pass a healthy workplace bill, and she introduced it a couple of times. It didn't, uh, it didn't ever make it to a full vote of the House or the Senate. Um, there were also study bills introduced to try to see about the prevalence of workplace bullying among state workers. That those bills also didn't pass. No, they didn't. Frankly, I think we don't need to study it. We know it's happening. <laughs> yeah. We've had studies, yeah. um, and what we need is the healthy workplace bill. And we have a phone call. Okay. Hi. Thanks for calling. Hello. How are you doing today? Hi. Good. 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 I was just listening to the show. My name is Neil Dias, and uh, I, I wanted to say uh, that I'm very happy that you're actually having a show on workplace bullying. Oh, Thank well, thanks, you. Thanks for calling, Neil. Good, good, good. Um, um, and, you, you know, they, they were talking about the healthy workplace bill, and, you know, it is very vital. And I, I, hope, I hope that everybody does everything that they can possibly do to get this law passed, because it, it's very vital to, to every single individual and our children going into the workplace in, in the future. So it is a very critical bill that is demolishing the morale of the individuals all over this country. So I credit you for, for, uh, for bringing this awareness and, and putting this show on and, and all the advocates and Kathy and everybody else down in Connecticut. Um, I think she's doing a terrific job, and, yes. and I'm very <laughs> proud of her, and, and I thank you for, uh, for, for doing this. Well, thank you very much for calling. Oh, okay. no problem, no problem. I will con be continue to listen to your show, so. Okay, Hi, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Big red hole yep. Hit that one. Okay. And we have another phone call. Put him on hold first. Okay. I think I did. I hope. I hope this works. Hi, thanks for calling. Hello? I'm not sure what happened to phone line two. Oh. Phone line two is there. He should be there. It's yeah. Red. It should be. Can phone the phone caller hear us? I guess you can try again. Okay. Thanks for calling. No? I'm hit the hold. Hello, hello, is this Kathy? Oh, oh hi. yeah. I'm Kathy's here. Hi. Yeah. 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 Yes, I, um, I was a little late to the show. Um, am, I, am I speaking to Kathy? Yes. Hi, Kathy. Um, my name is Michael Mursky. I'm uh, one of the uh, people that would like more awareness uh, to be brought to the uh, workplace bullying in the state of New Jersey. Right. Mike, I um, remember from you, from, I know you're on <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> Isn't Facebook oh, wonderful? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good way. Um, I was just wondering... Um, what we could do to try to coordinate the, uh, the 22 some odd states that are uh, trying to pass legislation on the healthy workplace bill and how we could cross support each other. Yeah, that's a very good question. And we have spent most of the first 10 or 15 minutes of the show talking about the problem. So maybe we can start talking about how to deal with it. Right. Um, the Healthy Workplace Bill, by the way, I just want to refer people, if you Google uh, or Yahoo or whatever you do, <laughs> Healthy Workplace Bill, you will come to a website that um, will show you about the law where you can see this brochure more closely. Um, 23 states have introduced the Healthy Workplace Bill. 
it's a state by state effort because the law is um, a, a tort law, personal injury law, right? <laughs> Where, um, so states govern that. It really can't be a federal law. But we certainly can work together to try to coordinate passing it. And um, we have a group of coordinators that um, work through the Workplace Bullying Institute in Bellingham, Washington. And uh, we basically, we sign a code of conduct and we uh, agree to lobby for uh, this particular version of the bill um, and to be advocates. Uh, I think that it's sometimes hard to, to get together. We have different social networking skills. So some people mm -hmm. are on Facebook, some people aren't. Um, but I think that we do need to start probably having some regional conferences and a, a lot more outreach. One of the things that one of the things that's a problem, of course, is we really are a grassroots movement. We are <laughs> definitely. We're <laughs> poor. So, you know, our cards, our business cards, yep. are made from uh, you know the, from staples. Yeah. <laughs> and and so I think one thing is that um, I think that we need to be communicating. Uh, in using the most economical ways that we can. So doing more public access shows right. to get the word out. Sending. And the social networking is so great because yeah. I've met a, a lot of people via Facebook through social networking who hold the same um, concerns about workplace bullying that I hold, you know, and um, it's been powerful. I. I, I, I met you this summer for the first time, but we, <laughs> right. we had been in contact with each other um, via Facebook. And, um, I, 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 you know, I feel it's very important, you know, to define what it is, to um, let people know that you've got to take an, an action. You can't just stand there and see something happening because, you know, it affects society. Mm -hmm. It does, you know. Um, you know, um, workplace bullying affects on um, the targets and the victims. Uh, workplace drama, in most cases, tends to be a devastating effect on a target's productivity, emotional, and physical health. The victims waste um, time between 10 to 52 percent of their time working to defend themselves against their abusers. And um, it, it, it results in an increase of absences due to stress-related illnesses. Mm -hmm. The trauma of the experience leaves them confused, helpless, and paralyzed. It tends to suddenly um, be overwhelming as mm -hmm. if it owns the person. Mm -hmm. um, and in some cases, targets become, become you know, um, victims of post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, some people feel that um, there's really nothing wrong with, with people who claim to have been traumatized in the workplace. And will even go as far as to say, oh, there's nothing wrong with these victims. Um, in fact, most believe that um, if they would just do their job right, you know, it'll go away. But that's not the case. Well, I'm thinking You're that the spoken. networking might be particularly powerful just because it can be such an isolating experience. Exactly. Yes. Somebody who's going through what Laura Lillian just described is feels like they're the only person yes. experiencing this. Yes. It's never happened to them before. They, they may not remember ever witnessing it. And a, a, on a social networking site, Mike and Neil, I both know from Facebook, <laughs> right? Oh, uh, Neil. And, oh. um, and we, you know, we go to each other's sites so I look mm -hmm. at the New Jersey site and the Virginia site and you know all of these in Massachusetts and New York and I, mm -hmm. I interact with them so I know what's going on everywhere mm -hmm. and I feel supported um, because as, as Laura Lillian said I'm a victim too yeah. my best friend died she didn't mm -hmm. have to she didn't have and, to at all no. and, uh, and I'm yeah. hurt um, and a lot of her family and friends are hurt and you know co-workers they're afraid you know to intervene because they're afraid that if they do then it, it, the abuser will start attacking them yeah they'll be the yeah, next target they'll be the next target you know but um, you know th but they are impacted because workplace bullying is evil mm -hmm. point blank it's evil it creates an evil environment it's counterproductive 
and um, it needs to be addressed. You know, and I think that the more information that we get out there, um, the better off, you know, the better off we'll be able to address this. You know, we do need to pass a healthy workplace yeah. bill. It's very important. Hi, I don't know if I'm still on, on the you line. Are. Uh, it has to, um, is I know personally from my own experience, um, stress at my previous employer, mm -hmm. unfortunately, um, my outlet was to take it out on my my wife. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. I know that there's been studies on, you know, the individual and how it affects, um, you know, the individual's health and, you know, mental stability, et cetera, et cetera. But has there any, been any studies on how it affects the family of the person being bullied, such yeah. as, like I just stated? I, I can't name those studies for you, although if you go to the Workplace Bullying Institute site, they do have a section on the website that addresses studies, but the the impact I, on families has been documented. Divorce rates. I just think that it skyrocket. needs to be, you know, brought out more prevalent because, unfortunately, you know, stress in the workplace, you know, the our easiest target and our outlet, unfortunately, is our family because right. we come home stressed and we vent on the easiest target we can, you know, spouse and children. And it yeah. just, you know, it's, it's not only affecting just that person's individual, it's been affecting wife, husband, children's psyche, mental stability, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It does have a rippling uh, thank effect. Thank you very much. I'm just, thank uh, you for calling. Uh, it does have a rippling effect. Um, I am so saddened, you know, with, with what had happened to my loved one and her children. You know, um, it, uh, the family is, you know, like um, torn apart. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it was for no reason at all. And, you know, um, this person uh, was so vibrant, you know, very, very intelligent. And I think that was the reason why she was attacked in the first place. You know, there's um, no limits to what an abuser will go through go to to attack somebody but I feel that it's incumbent upon the employer you know to stop it to address it yeah. especially in state service I've had um, yes I've had targets call me and and they basically and a lot of them will say you know my spouse just can't take it anymore I cry yes. all the time yes and yes. they tell me I have to cheer up or I have to buck up or and, and I think even sometimes the most understanding families finally reach a limit. In part, they've lost health insurance, so they can't get family therapy or counseling. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, there aren't. There's not a lot of public understanding about the effects of workplace bullying, so it's not. So it's not widely understood what the effects are going to be. And uh, frankly, there. We're not the most sympathetic society. I just <laughs> no, say. we're not really very supportive from no. cradle to grave or not. Right. I mean, I, I love America, but I don't think Americans are um, culturally very supportive. We, we tend to be more individualistic and sometimes critical yeah. of, of one another. Now, I was wondering how it filters down to the children and into school places, you know, whether it leads to bullying or poor achievement or whatever, even, you know, in, in, in within the public school systems? Well, you know, bullying begins in the playground, you know, and if it's not addressed at that point in time, it just moves on to the, um, the corporate, you know, room, you know, or maybe in, you know, your state or your, um, your clerical offices. And, and I do want to point out that um, according to a 2010 report by the Connecticut Permanent Commission on the Status of Women, 58% of the perpetrators of bullying are women. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, um, and that's really, really sad. Yeah. 58%. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I want to say most of the targets of bullying are, are women, women too. as well. Although yeah. men are also targeted. Yes, they and, are. Mm -hmm. And um, I think sometimes for men, it's it's also there are other problems that come into it because they're not men are not usually the victims of domestic violence. They have a little harder time mm -hmm. expressing their distress at intimate violence, and especially if it's happening to oh, them yes. by a woman, oh, can yeah. be the. Right. the kinds of stress and humiliation can be um, 
can be quite different and unusual for them. Mm. And men often don't have the same kind of social network around them. Not the same kind of supportive yeah. Yeah. You know, network that women do. Now, to, I guess I want to think a little bit about, now that it's on the radar screen, uh, um, what the solutions are you know, in terms of help for targets and workplaces and you know, what's happening to make this better. Well, I hope we're going to have a legislative <laughs> session in 2013. Yes. Yes. There are any legislators out there listening? Yeah, <laughs> healthy, mm -hmm. healthy workplace bill. Yeah. We have a model bill by mm -hmm. um, that was authored by Professor David Yamada of Suffolk Law School in Massachusetts. This bill has been introduced in 23 states. Um, it has been introduced in Connecticut before, so we're really hoping that the new co-chairs of the Labor Committee. Um, pick it up and, and run with it. Um, I hope to be able to speak with them. We're certainly going to do a lobby day mm -hmm. um, in Connecticut uh, at the legislature. We want to tell people don't be afraid to contact your legislators. That's right. If you don't yeah. know how to, um, you just Google my name, Kathy mm -hmm. Hermes. Uh -huh. You can find me. <laughs> and I will tell and you. you'll be able to find me yes. as well. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> And, and, and you can look up workplace bullying, yes. healthy workplace mm -hmm. bill. Mm -hmm. There, there are yeah. several uh, Facebook sites and websites oh, yeah. that are addressing. Right. It's on this the radar. Issue. It's on the it's on the radar. You know. Um. Now, what specific provisions does the bill have that would help the problem on all these different levels? Well, first of all, the bill tries to um, deal with intentional bullying. So I, I want to make it clear, the person who is um, a crank, yeah, you know, that, just a not, curmudgeon, no. a jerk even, yeah. is not the, mm -hmm. the person that the bill is yeah. aimed at, right? This is, the, this is the person who is abusive. And I think it's really important to remember that intentionally abusive knows the harm he or she's causing to the target. And if it's repetitive, you know, it's, it's not, right. you know, repetitive. If they have a history of doing it, it right. needs to be addressed. Right. One, one very severe instance might be enough, but usually it is repeated behavior. Yeah. Okay. And then what the law does is it allows for the target to bring a lawsuit, and the burden on the target is to prove that there has been, first of all, health harm, right? So if, if you've been bullied, and this has not hurt you yet in yeah. terms of your health, well, you're not damaged in any way. You can't sue. So this isn't going to create a lot of lawsuits. Right. Um, but, um, but if your health has been harmed, and then if you've suffered um, any, any damages, any economic repercussions, you've lost days at work, or you've been wrongfully terminated, mm -hmm. um, or those kinds of things, you can be compensated for that. And um, and so the the bill also allows you allows the target to sue both the business or the employer and the and the, and oh. the bully. Yeah. But both the businesses and the bullies have what we call affirmative defenses, and this is I think important for people who are worried that it's going to um, have a negative effect on business growth or business opportunity. First of all, if an employer has taken steps to ensure that once they're made aware of bullying, it stops, the employer is out of the lawsuit, right? They, they have an affirmative defense if mm -hmm. they can show that. The bully, uh, or the alleged bully, rather, um, if, if they can show that all they were doing was exercising their reasonable uh, functions of their job, say in making a uh, making an evaluation mm -hmm. or disciplining an unproductive worker, that's an affirmative defense. So supervisors are still going to be able to write right. pink slips mm -hmm. for employees who are not doing their jobs, um, and and the bill tries to I think set up this balance, I think in a very reasonable way where. If a reasonable person would understand that this is intentional bullying, and you can see that the plaintiff has been has had their health harmed, 
and then has suffered economic harm as a result of that, then they can be compensated. And businesses have a defense if they've tried to take action. So if someone is, is suff starting to suffer physical harm, it, it would be their task to start documenting, yes. I, I'm guessing. Yes, that's very document. important to document. Even now, without yeah. a law, I always tell targets when they call me, see a physician, mm -hmm. talk to a therapist, right? The physician, because your, your health is going to change, um, and get a baseline and know what that is. And a therapist, because you are going to be facing stress that you've never faced before. Um, and yes, you need to write everything down. Now, how long, how much time usually passes between when a, a target starts figuring this is a real problem and when they have enough evidence to bring a, a suit? Well, I think we don't know about that because it we, it's not, it, no one can bring suits yet. The law hasn't been passed <laughs> in any yeah. case. I mean, I think that what we see is generally people start to feel symptoms. I think I saw one study that said around 16 to 18 months into a bullying situation, oh. the symptoms will be so severe that, that the person will be ready to quit. Now, some people hang in there much longer. And I've because known they have, have no choice. That's right. Sure. I, I yeah. mean, I've known people 15 years in. Yeah. Right? But generally, about 16 to 18 months. Now we have another phone call. Hi, thanks for calling. You're on the air. Or maybe not. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay, great, great. This is Neil. I've been listening to your call, and, and I mean, you're, you're, and you're doing a great job. Absolutely spectacular. I just want to let you know that I, um, Kathy knows my story, and, and my story is very long, so I'm not going to get into that. But what, I, what I've learned is well, I, I, I started to witness bullying, and when I worked, I was a high-level manager of Verizon, and I started to witness the bullying years ago. And what happens is when I went out to start it, try to stop it and try to bring it to the, to the attention of some people higher up, um, they did nothing for it. They, they actually, I had to go to meetings and I actually watched how they incited it, how they pushed it on. And what happened is it ended up um, coming full face back to me. And in a long story, there's a lot of things that happened. I ended up getting wrongfully terminated. And actually, I have trial against Ryden in March. But the point of the matter is... Um, I ended up starting a, my own campaign nationally because of workplace bullying that I witnessed and I saw it in my, and I received thousands and thousands of stories. And that's how I got to meet Kathy and speak in New York and Connecticut and Massachusetts right. and Washington at the National Workplace Bullying Institute with Gary Namey. But what it does to a family is devastating. What it does to an individual is devastating. I was a former Marine. I have two degrees. I worked my way up to the top of the company in Verizon. I would be flown into New York City and limoed in and taxied back out. So I, 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 I you know, I don't want to say just an average and only. I'm, I was a person striving. Never in a million years someone could have ever told me that I would, I would be doing what I am today. But the devastation to a family is beyond. The devastation to the individual is beyond. Mm -hmm. It demoralizes you. It strips you from That's everything nice. that you become a shell. And that's what's happening to people. I sit and I listen to people. I speak to people. I've had, I, I, it brings you to tears, the stories of good people that were told that they have go out and give a good day's work. They come home. They'll be able to, to, to support their family with dignity and doing the right things and have good values and, and moral and do all the right things every day to be stripped from stuff because they're, they're being bullied and harassed at work and nobody tends to do anything. Right. And the misconception about the bill, because it is a great bill, and the reason why I think we're having a hard time passing is because everybody thinks it's about suing, and it's not about suing. Most right. people want their job. It, they really, truly want their job. I wish I still had my job. I wish I wouldn't be where I am today. I went from making a six-figure income to $16.20 an hour. I'm, I've lost my, my credit's gone. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, in, 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 in pre-foreclosure. I can't pay one bill. I'm in out of court because I can't pay bills. I've never been like that in my life. i worked my way up to build my credibility and respect. But the misconception is nobody wants to sue. Most people don't. 
All they want to do is go to work, be left alone, and do the right thing for the company that they truly work for and truly are dedicated until mm-hmm. someone comes along and decides that they're going to control their mm-hmm. future and their lives. Yeah. So the bill is really to maintain that stability to hold people accountable. Yeah, I we think have that's more. a really important we, point, Neil, that, you know, although the bill is going to give people the right to sue, under certain yes. circumstances, it's going to be for those circumstances that really have gotten out of control. Right. And I think, yes. you know, we've seen with sexual harassment laws that yes. you really can turn workplaces around. This well, is it's got yeah. a pre- yeah. preventive effect. Right. Yeah, it does, and, you know, because, you know, in, in workplace, in um, sexual harassment um, um, matters, you know, um, maybe uh, the, the boss or the employer might not want to do something, but if there's a law that makes them do something, then that's you right. Know, right. It's, that's taken care of. Exactly right. right. And what happens is, majority of people out there, there's a law for speeding and, and, and uh, uh, murder and everything. So uh, there's people that. And good people are not going to make that extra step. There's more people you'll be able to control with laws than, 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 than bad people. Right. So the fact of the matter is, it's going to maintain stability in the workplaces. That's what this law is about. Mm-hmm. Now, most people are going to sit there and say, I'm going to be held accountable at a higher level, or, you know, I'm going to back off. I'm not going to be vindictive. I'm not going to be retaliatory. I'm not going to intentionally inflict harm. And they're going to sit back. It's only going to create productivity in the workplace, better harmony, and yes. more people getting along. Mm-hmm. It will reduce lawsuits. It will reduce reduce all this useless grievances and everything else in the workplace. That's what this bill does. And if God willing, if there God forbid something it happens to the, that, that's at the highest level of abuse of behavior in the workplace, it gives people the opportunity because believe me, I've been fighting this case for nine years and I know the work and, and what it's done to me and my family. It's stripped yeah. me from somebody that I believe I could achieve yes. the world to somebody that has no confidence at all no more. I know that. So this bill is only going to help everybody. It's going to help your children and my children. When they go into corporate America, they won't have to do and go, will go through what I went through and so many people around this country. Yeah. I mean, I think you bring, a, a, bring up another good point, which is businesses are going to do better. They're going to waste yes. less money, waste less time. Have a better, better environment, more productivity, of exactly. course, and you know less That's of right. a turnover. You know, but I do want to say, you know, in state services, this is what I have observed: that um, the bulliers, they have it's it, it's because of the culture, the environment. You know, you have a lot of nepotism and cronyism in some agencies where the bullier is is overlooked. Yeah, you know, it's I mean, probably a downsize of state service where some people stay in their jobs for very long. Oh yeah, times. yeah, they stay in their job for for very long yeah. time, and um, they um, they create this chaos. But I would like to mention again that the taxpayer pays for the legal representation of these people who right. bully. Right. So know, we're all this, paying even if we don't know it. Right. <laughs> you're paying for it, you know, and so, you know, that has, you know, I think that the state of Connecticut has to be held accountable, you know, yeah. for this. Well, and you know, Neil, Neil works for a large private corporation. Uh, we both are state employees. And the one thing I think you see is that it can become very entrenched in these places where um, people are highly educated, people are highly dedicated. I, I have yet to meet a target who didn't love their job before yes. the bullying yeah. started. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they have pensions, they have health insurance. So a lot of things keep them in that job and lock them in that job. And part of it's love of the job and part of it's economic benefit, needs. Economic need. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and that allows, if the, if the employer is not doing things to make a healthy workplace, then it allows for a workplace to become toxic Yes, if you get the wrong employee in there. Now, so uh, we have about 10 minutes. Um, so in terms of the legislative action, uh, where do we stand and what can we do about it? Okay, so I, I want to urge everybody to write or call their legislator. I mean, this is sometimes different, uh, just a different thing to do for most people. Many people have never, ever contacted a government official for anything, right? But if you um, go online and you write in Connecticut General Assembly, Mm -hmm. uh, the website will come up and there will be a link that says find your legislator. You put in your address, the names come up, and all you need to say to them is, 
essentially, I think there should be a law against abusive conduct at work. And that's uh, all. Or, or the healthy, you know, I think the healthy workplace bill should be enacted and you don't need to elaborate on no, it? No, you don't. It's very simple mm. because, you know, uh, most of them know that this is, you know, on the horizon now. Yes. This is coming yeah. up. This is a small point, but you mentioned that protected classes don't apply. This is just everyone right. is an individual right. based yes. on their experiences. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. This law is different from some uh, civil rights or harassment legislation in that it protects, it doesn't single out classes of people. And what I mean by that is in, say, in sexual harassment, right, it's based on sex. Um, and um, we have other sort of Title VII protections, race, religion, ethnicity, et cetera. What this bill does is it looks at the behavior of the bully, mm -hmm. right? So, so the target really, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, doesn't matter. You can, have, yeah. you can have red hair, brown hair, blue eyes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can be tall, short, fat, skinny. Whatever the thing is, it's not really about the target. Um, it's it's about, about what the bully's bully. doing. Yes. Right, the behavior of the bully. And um, because a, a lot of times, I mean, sometimes it's very clear there's racial discrimination going on or racial mm -hmm. harassment. Yes. Sometimes that's very clear. Most of the time, uh, in fact, four, it's four times more likely that you have no idea why mm -hmm. the bully is doing what he or she is doing. And actually, you don't really need to psychoanalyze your bully. You just no. need to get it to stop. In fact, yes. I think <laughs> this is the one thing I find that what everybody says is, I just want it to stop. That's, I just that's want to go true. back to work. That's what my loved one, you know, wanted. She, she wanted it to stop. And, and you said and also, a, it was typical that she left her job. Oh, yeah. 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 Because um, they start um, doubting themselves. Oh, what did I do wrong? I did something right. wrong. You know, and they have self-guilt. Right. Um, uh, their esteem is, you know, totally obliterated, you know, and... Um, we have to work to stop this kind of thinking on the part of targets. Yes. That, mm -hmm. and, and sometimes a lot of the psychological literature or the self-help books yes. kind of reinforce this idea that there's something the target could have done yes. that the target could have changed. In fact, there's yeah. a recent article in Psychology Today that sort of suggests that if you behave in a different way... Yeah. Let me tell you, this, yeah. this is not true. It's the same way with domestic violence yeah. as it is with workplace bullying. Yeah. It's, not, it's not the target, and it's, it's the bullying. And, and yeah. really, there's really no such thing of mediation. You, you cannot mediate this. No. And that's also true as in d domestic violence, yeah. that yeah. getting the, the two people together in a room yeah. is, is worse than yes. more, yet more damaging. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, uh, when, I was, um, when I was in law school in um, the 1980s, one of the things I did was buy, I volunteered for the city of Durham to be a mediator. And our first lesson was you never mediate a situation in which there's violence. And it doesn't matter if that violence is physical or psychological. The minute you detect violence, mediation is out. And I will say yes. that workplace bullying is a violent act. Yes. Um, yes. Not covered, though, by workplace violence laws, and don't mm -hmm. don't be fooled by that. Yes, workplace violence laws will often talk about psychological harm, mm -hmm. but short of a physical assault that accompanies mm -hmm. the psychological mm -hmm. harm, they won't prosecute mm -hmm. under workplace violence laws. So we need this healthy workplace. We yes. do. We absolutely. Okay. Do. So if people want to help, what else can they do besides call their legislators? Um, one of the things they can do is. I think help educate other people about it. So now you've learned that there's this problem, workplace bullying. Um, you may have witnessed it. You may have been a target. You need to start educating your friends and family about it. One of the ways you can do this, if, you're, if, if you like to write um, short letters to the editor, that, yes. to the editors of newspapers, mm -hmm. that would be a big help. Just talking to your neighbors, talking to your friends, about the problem. Um, if you hear somebody saying, you know, I just can't hear one more story from my boyfriend about what's happening at work, try to feel that 
situation out and say, you know, have you ever heard of workplace bullying? Do you know that your boyfriend might be a victim, bullied, a might target. be a target? Yes. And, and you need to be understanding. And if okay. you see it on the job, if you are a witness to it, we have to um, do something about it. You know, you have to, you can't remain silent. You have to say something about it. Right. So if we can get you know, the country, America, to, th to realize that it's okay, you know, to say something. Actually, it's your duty. Yeah. I feel that it's your duty. If you see somebody being harassed, um, denigrated, degraded, you know, um, humiliated. If you see that happening in your workplace, open up your mouth and say something about it. Um, one of the things we're down to our last three minutes. Oh, I'm just going to warn you. Okay, so I just want to just want to <laughs> say that a lot of times people feel that if they stand up for the target, that they themselves will become targets. There is not really evidence for this. It may happen in some cases. I'm, I'm not saying it doesn't happen. But the evidence is almost overwhelming that if you stand up, that you are likely to have as much pushback effect oh. on the bully um, as, to, as to have any kind of... Uh, so it's more likely to help than to make things worse. It is more likely to help, um, especially if it's an early intervention. And that can be just something as simple as uh, if I see Ronan being bullied, that I let it be known I don't approve. Yes. Now, in the last two minutes, <laughs> you have some stuff here on the table, I and we can't yeah. zoom in on it, but where can a person get a button that okay. talks about you know, passing the work, right. healthy workplace? So if you go to the Workplace Bullying Institute website run by Dr. Gary and Dr. Ruth Namey, um, they have buttons. Uh, this one says, Workplace Bullying Breaks Hearts. And there are a number of different buttons that they have. This one says, um, Pass the Anti-Bullying Healthy Workplace Bill. And this says, Work Shouldn't Hurt. <laughs> work Shouldn't Hurt. And um, the Workplace Bullying Institute just has an amazing array of, you know, bumper stickers. Um, we see some t-shirts here as well. I made these t-shirts. If you want oh. a green t-shirt, you can. And we have <laughs> But this is a available, mug. and a lot of t-shirts are available um, through the Workplace Bullying Institute site and on Cafe Press. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and also, if you want educational materials, a lot of flyers. We have the studies that were done um, that you might be able to just see a little bit here that there are graphs that show um, the prevalence of workplace bullying um, and how much it costs employers and things like that. So a lot of, a lot of good graphics if you want to educate people about it. So people can just go to workplacebullying.org yeah. or... Uh, just put that in the website and it'll come up. It'll come up. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you very much <laughs> for coming well, thank on. Thank you for having us. I'm, yeah. You know, glad to have you, and yeah. good luck with getting a bill passed yes. this year. Mm -hmm. It seems like we're past due for it. Yes. Thanks very much, Ron. Yeah, thanks for coming down, and mm -hmm. we'll be back next week, still Tuesday uh, at 8 o'clock. So we'll see you then.